Welcome to today's episode, which is about lies. Um, lies that I used to tell to other people to protect the eating disorder, to protect myself from being found out and enable me to partake in the eating disorder behaviors. And I'm recording this because I went blueberry picking with my mum last weekend. And la the last time before that, that I went picking with her, she was happily eating blueberries and picking. And then at the end, she said, oh, why don't we go for lunch? Which was a lovely thing to suggest. And I said to her, oh, I'm so full. I can't possibly go for lunch because I've eaten so many blueberries. When in actual fact, I hadn't eaten a single one. And it was just a complete lie to stop me having to go for lunch to protect the eating disorder and allow myself to continue to starve myself. So I thought that this is such a big thing within eating disorders that we lie to ourselves and we lie to other people. And I was reflecting back on all the different lies I told people throughout my life because of the eating disorders to allow me to continue. So I looked up on God Google and God Google says that eating disorders are complex mental health conditions that involve a distorted relationship with food, body image and self-esteem. Whilst it's not accurate to say that eating disorders promote lies intentionally, they are characterized by the presence of various cognitive and behavioral patterns that involve dishonesty or deception. Here are some reasons why eating disorders may promote lies. Shame and secrecy. Eating disorders often thrive in an environment of secrecy and shame. People with eating disorders may feel embarrassed or ashamed of their behaviors and the negative thoughts they have about their bodies. As a result, they may lie or hide their actions to avoid judgment and criticism from others. And for me, this was a big part in the early days of my eating disorder. I tried very hard to keep it secret because I knew that other people would judge me and not allow it to continue. And I used to wear so many layers of clothes to hide the fact that I was getting thinner and to just hide the whole eating disorder. I used to tell people that I'd already eaten somewhere else at a friend's or I'd had something on the way home from school. And I used to lie to myself, like I used to believe myself when I said like one cup of soup was a full meal when in fact it's got barely any calories in it. But I used to lie to myself and believe that that was actually the truth, that it was a full meal. And I used to tell myself that it was okay to be hiding it because what I was doing was powerful and it was actually helping me when it wasn't at all. Another reason people lie is fear of judgment. People with eating disorders may, be, may fear being judged or misunderstood by others. They may worry about how their disordered eating patterns will be perceived, leading them to conceal their behaviors or downplay the severity of them. This fear of judgment can contribute to the perpetuation of lies and denials. And diet culture has got so much to do with this because people do take notice of diet culture. Whatever we want, whatever we wish, and whatever is the right thing to do, it is a fact that as a society, we are dominated by these societal ideals that suggest that we will be happy, we will be accepted, we will be a worthy member of society if we fit a certain body type. And people do judge. People judge all the time and there's, there's nothing we can do about it. Every single one of us judges. Some people judge in a more unkind way than others, but we all judge each other. We all judge. I mean, somebody could be like really angry and with a really... Uh, what do they call it, a resting bitch face and be really, really unpleasant. And if that's your first time meeting them, you will judge them and probably think they're a really unpleasant person and just not a nice person to know. But in fact, they could be going through anything and we don't know. So we do all judge and we are all judged. But this fear of judgment can make us way more susceptible to telling lies to try and make ourselves appear 
more acceptable, when in fact, all we have to do is be ourselves to be acceptable. Another reason people lie is control and manipulation. Eating disorders are often driven by a desire for control over one's body and emotions. Individuals may engage in secretive behaviors such as restricting food intake, purging or excessive exercise as a way to exert control. Lying about their actions allows them to maintain a sense of control and manipulate others' perceptions. And this again was very, very true for me. I certainly kept very, very secret the fact that I was abusing laxatives. And that was a form of control for me to control in my mind how much calories I was absorbing. In actual fact, it doesn't really, it's not a particularly effective way of purging whatsoever. Um, but in my mind, it made complete sense. And restricting food intake again was something that I kept quite secret or made excuses for by saying that I was fasting. And excessive exercise, nobody really knew how much exercise I was doing because a lot of it was done in secret. And it is very much about control and manipulation for others' perceptions, but also to try and manipulate my own body. Another reason people lie is that they have a distorted perception of reality. Eating disorders are accompanied by distorted thinking patterns, including cognitive distortions related to body image and self-worth. People with eating disorders may genuinely believe the lies they tell themselves and others, and their distorted, distorted perception of reality can make it challenging for them to acknowledge the truth or seek help. And again, this is huge and also not helped by society. I had a very distorted way of thinking about health and about the way the wellness culture and stuff promotes health. I felt that I had to follow it to the absolute letter and not have anything that was processed, anything that wasn't organic. Everything had to be clean and I cut out entire food groups and stuff. And it was really obsessive and I got so, so panicked if I felt that I'd eaten something that wasn't clean and pure and I had so much anxiety over that. And that is such a distorted image because in reality, food is just food and our bodies will take what they need from what we eat and get rid of the rest. And our bodies are amazing at doing that and keeping us well. And in actual fact, the stress we have from believing all these wellness and fitness and body image things, the stress causes us far more harm than anything we put in our mouths. And obviously there's also the distortion of when you look in the mirror and what you see isn't actually what your body looks like. And most people with an eating disorder, not everybody, but most people and certainly me, when I looked in the mirror, I just saw all the things I didn't like. And I saw a body that was grossly overweight when in fact it was a body that was grossly underweight. And we can't trust what we see with these cognitive distortions. So again, that's, that's us lying to ourselves and our eating disorder lying to ourselves. And again, beauty industry and diet culture has taught us that this is where our self-worth lies. But really, it's, that's rubbish. We are not our bodies. We're worth so much more than our bodies. And when you look at all the really like famous people who are famous for being incredible, incredible in some way, they're not famous for their bodies, not at all. These are... Um, amazing people throughout history that have done wonderful things. They've done that with nothing to do with what their body looks like, their body size or anything like that. So our self-worth does not lie in what we look like or our body size. Another thing that people lie about often or lie for is to avoid getting treatment. Denial is a common aspect of eating disorders and people may deny or minimize the severity of their condition to avoid treatment. Admitting the truth 
would mean facing challenges and discomfort associated with recovery, which is actually really daunting for someone in the grips of an eating disorder. And we often feel that we're not actually sick enough because you can look around and find examples of people who are just so unbelievably sick and so on death's door and literally having like multiple organ failure and, and looking like a skeleton. And you can think, well, I'm not like that, so therefore I'm not sick enough. But if you have an eating disorder that is affecting you, affecting the way you live your life and causing you to do things that hurt you and harm you, then you are very much sick enough. And that's the lie that is just directly from the eating disorder, not from you. It's important to note that the lies associated with eating disorders are the symptoms of the underlying psychological distress rather than a deliberate intention to deceive others. And when you go through recovery from an eating disorder, this often involves addressing these underlying issues and working towards developing a better and healthier relationship with food, body image, and self-esteem and self-worth and self-compassion because it is an illness and it's quite a severe mental illness and having some compassion for the fact that you are ill and that's okay, you didn't cause this, you didn't ask for it and you do deserve help. That's a really important part of recovery. So I was thinking and reflecting back about all this and I've actually just done an Instagram post for it because if somebody was tell, doing something that hurt you and they were making you tell lies about it to other people to cover up what they were doing to enable them to continue to hurt you, that would be abuse. That would be setting alarm bells ringing, probably against the law. And people would be horrified that that was going on. But that's exactly what happens in an eating disorder. <clears throat> and you lie to protect it, and you lie to enable it to continue hurting you. And when you think about it like that, it's literally all kinds of wrong. And we shouldn't be allowing this to happen to ourselves because there is help and you do deserve to recover, and you can recover. I truly believe that anybody can recover from an eating disorder. So please do reach out for help. It's there, it's waiting for you. Contact me, contact another recovery coach. There are so many people out there who are ready to help you. I hope this episode has been enjoyable, and please rate me five stars so that I can reach other people. Thank you so much for listening.